Okay. Um, those series of reports, just to flick back to some samples of those, these are some of the standard production reports. So we can have one for production efficiency, for example, and you can see there we've obviously got very chart-based information. Again, the way we set these up, we can actually drill down then into lower levels of detail. So production efficiency, on-time production rates, plan versus actual costs, all of the sorts of things that we can actually see as a key performance indicator on our home page, we can also chart those as well. These are standard reports. We've also got some very powerful report writing tools that will actually allow you to create your own versions of these reports as well. And we can use those tools, those um, reporting tools, to produce other kinds of dashboards. So we've already seen a home page where we can have a dashboard. But we can also use um, SQL analysis services, SQL reporting services, to actually create these kind of dashboards. And these are some uh, examples of where we've done work for, for customers in the past. So, You'll see in here, for example, things like equipment performance, uh, throughput information, scrap and yield information, uh, and so on. And they can all be presented very graphically with that being chart-based form, or whether it be with these gauges uh, or speedo dials type, type approaches, we can use all of those as well. So that's just a, a few examples of uh, the sort of things we can do with the, the reporting tools. Now going back into AX, what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to start off looking at some product details. So here you'll see we've got a common area within the product information management where I can specify the released products. Now the purpose behind having a list of released products here is that we may be, of course, in the process of designing products, going through engineering stages, etc. But I may want to, in a multi-company environment, only release those products to certain companies within our enterprise. Uh, and that's what we can do here. By looking at the released ones, we're seeing the ones that are available within this particular company that we are actually working with. So there's a lot of engineering controls there that I'm going to come back to and touch on a little bit more as well. Okay, so go to a list of items. So straight away, you'll see that we've got a grid. It is your typical sort of Microsoft grid, so I can drag and drop, resize these fields, etc. And of course, I can use the quick filter at the top here to actually look for a particular item number or I can search for different product names, etc. So a key part of AX is that you can search on absolutely everything. So I can use the more function here to actually search on any content that, uh, that we choose to from the system. So filtering down that list, it's taken me to 1101, which is where I've got a product that I just want to, to refer to for this. So there are a few things across the top here that I just wanted to, to highlight. Uh, I can have product attributes, for example, which can be very useful from an engineering point of view. Um, if I'm looking for a particular component or a particular part, I may want to search for that by its particular properties uh, or attributes. So in this case, we've got the number of drivers, for example, and the largest driver diameter. All of these uh, you can have as many, of course, in this list as you want to, but it gives you the capability to define those attributes and then search by them. So if, if I'm in the process of designing, I may need to look for a washer that's a certain width, uh, internal diameter, thickness, property type, etc., material type. I can actually do a search for all of those within the system and it will draw me to those. What I've also got is the, the ability to have product images, so we can start to define product images that are against the products. Uh, we can also define product categories, so in here you can have as many category definitions as you want to, uh, again, and these can actually be structured in a tree structure format. So we're not restricting product definition to you know, a handful of different categorizations. You can have as many different categorizations as you want. And that's great for doing things like analysis, for searching for product ranges. You know, as an engineer uh, in the design process, you may look at products very differently and your product classification is very diff differently to how people actually sell the products, for example. So it's good to have those different category hierarchies that you can actually choose from uh, and relate those to. What we can also do, I've not done here, but we can also relate products. So I could say which are the spare part products, for example, which are ones that are considered to be accessories. So again, it's just giving me the definition there to be able to link off to lots of other products in lots of different ways uh, in the system. Now, wherever we are, we always have this ability to also make attachments. Uh, and that can be very important because here, for example, we might want to attach a a Word document or it might be an image that we want to attach to it or it might be just a series of notes that we want to attach. Here I'm attaching them to product details and this is in this case a document that's actually been generated um, from an area of the system called a task recorder. So we can let the system generate our Word documents for processes for example and we can attach them to different content. So as I say we're looking at product details here. Um, 
So I may have an image that's attached to the content, for example. It's used all throughout the system. So if you are looking at purchase orders, as a, as a classic example, you may take a photograph of damaged goods, for example, and you may then attach it to the purchase order. You may scan a purchase invoice uh, and, again, attach that to the purchase order. So classic uses for, for attachments. And that is a, a feature that is, as I say, available throughout the entire system. Okay, I'm now going to look at the engineer tab in here, and this straight away draws us to some of the things we can do. So here, for example, under the bomb section, you'll see that we can look at the lines, we can also look at the bomb designer, and we can do a where used inquiry. However, across to the right here, you can see I've got the same sort of things for formulas. Now, that's really for if we are using batch or process manufacturing. So it does support both environments, it's saying which type of product this is and how it should be manufactured, are they using process methods or more discrete manufacturing methods, uh, and associate those to them. So what I'm going to do here is, first of all, I'm going to look at the bomb designer. So this takes us into a screen which is a tree structure view of the products within the system and its, its structure. So you can see that we are going down multiple levels of sub-assembly here. Uh, and you also see, obviously, the product numbers and a description of those. And this area is very configurable. It's actually an area that is drag and drop enabled. So in the bottom right, we'll see a list of potential parts that we can actually choose. And I can just drag and drop them into any level of the structure to actually manipulate, essentially, the bill of materials there. What you'll also see above that is we have the current route. So this is the production process that we would be going through from here. So this has got some cutting, some drilling, some sanding, and some finishing. But you'll also see that there is an arrow to the right, uh, to the, the left there, sorry, of the, uh, the operation ID. And that indicates where this particular material is actually used. So in this case, we've got medium density fiber board that is needed at the initial stage of production. If I look at the wood finish, though, that's actually used at the very end of production. So again, it's important here that we're actually assigning the right material to be used at the right stage of production, because when it comes to our scheduling activities, we want to have the right things available at the right time. And if we've got particularly long production processes, of course, we don't want the packaging to be available necessarily at the very start of production, but we definitely do want it to be available at the end where we're actually doing that final stage. Uh, and that's all related to the master planning side of the system and the scheduling side of the system as well. Now, it's also very important to be able to have multiple copies of bills of materials. So you can see here, for example, I have two bomb versions, each which, if you look below, has a different set of components or a different set of material requirements. We can also specify rules for different sites. So again, that could be particularly important. In different sites, we may manufacture uh, an end product in different ways. Of course, we can also have effectivity dates, so from and to dates. And we can also have from quantities. So basically, you may manufacture a part in a different way, depending on the volumes that you're going through. Classic there will be around subcontracting, where you do things in a different way. You subcontract more parts out, for example, if you are making more than a certain quantity. You also see in here the ability to indicate that the bill of materials is approved and that it is active. So approval of those bill of materials and activation of those bill of materials is very important as well. And I'm going to come back a little bit later to a, a function of the system called workflow, but workflow may be a classic way of actually enabling um, those bill of material versions to become approved, and we'll talk about engineering change control uh, as well.